In this video, I will be describing the pathogenesis of Yersinia pestis. This is Yersinia pestis. It is the causative pathogen agent of the plague. For clarity's sake, when describing Yersinia pestis inside of a host, I'll just be using this little green dot just for scale's sake. So, in Yersinia pestis' normal enzootic cycle, it cycles between rodents, commonly mice, rats, squirrels, prairie dogs, and their ectoparasite, the flea. So, when, a, when an infected flea bites a non-infected uh, rodent, it, tra it passes the ectoparasite to the rat, and it cycles back and forth between infected uh, rodents and non-infected fleas and infected fleas to non-infected rodents. So, uh, as a side note, other animals outside of this rodent flea cycle can be infected by eating infected animals. Uh, the only carnivore that I have is this Hello Kitty doll, so the cat would eat the mouse and could then become infected with Yersinia pestis. So, humans can become infected with Yersinia pestis and enter into this cycle via three main routes. The first route is via the bite of an infected flea. The second route is con via contact uh, with infected fluids or tissue from an infected carcass of, say, a dead animal. So maybe you find a person finds a dead mouse in their basement. They don't realize that it's it been infected with Yersinia pestis, and they're they get infected that way if they have maybe a cut or something. And finally, via infected or inhalation of infected droplets from a patient with pneumonic plague. So back to Yersinia pestis, the pathogen itself. It is a gram-negative facultative intracellular uh, bacillus-shaped bacterium. It contains three important plasmids for the pathogenesis of uh, Yersinia pestis which is marked by these three circles here. The first plasmid is a 70 to 75 kilobase plasmid that encodes for T3SS, the V antigen, and the Yersinia bactin siderophore system gene. The second is a 100 to 110 kilobase plasmid, which allows the bacteria to survive in the gut of the flea. And lastly, a 9.5 kilobase plasmid, which encodes for the plasminogen activator PLA in pesticin. Uh, this last plasmid is a major virulence factor for promoting sy the systemic spread of the bacteria. So Yersinia pestis is introduced into the human host via the bite of an infected flea. So it moves from the gut of the flea and is transferred into the human host at the site of the bite. Here at the bite site, the bacteria is faced with host phagocytes, including neutrophils and macrophages. Upon being phagocytized by neutrophils, the bacterium usually dies. However, the, import the important players here are the macrophages. Here, Yersinia pestis preferentially infects macrophages because they can survive inside of them. In the early stages of infection, the bacterium enters the macrophages, where it proliferates and gains antiphagocytic capabilities. So the macrophage is very important for the pathogenesis of Yersinia pestis. Uh, they allow the pathogen to be protected from the rest of the host immune system. They also allow the pathogen to proliferate and gain phagocytic resistance Remember from before that virulence plasmid, which encodes for T3SS. It's used to encode for YOP substrates, which inhibits phagocytosis and block host pro-inflammatory signals. 
So this maturation in and proliferation inside of the macrophages uh, allows the pathogen to be able to survive extracellularly. And then displayed here in green is just the lymphatic circula circulatory system uh, in the human. So before release, the pathogen hitches a ride in the macrophage to one of the local lymph nodes. We'll just say one of the ones in the groin. So it gets here. Here in the local lymph nodes is where the pathogen proliferates slash grows in numbers. Uh, this gives rise to the characteristic bubos of the bubonic plague. And then it's going to be released into the extracellular space, free to circulate. So we're going to put one here, one in the lungs, because now it's, it's extracellular, so it can also go in the blood. One up here. So... Now, having been released extracellularly, the bacteria disseminates via the blood and lymph to the spleen and liver, which causes septicemia, to the lungs, causing pneumonic plague, and to the meninges and cerebral spinal fluid, causing meningitis.